Our site for Clovis people is primarily manufacture pouring manufacturing site. I mean, the churn is there, they're processing it, and they're, and they're beating out, uh, creating these bifaces. And of course, what they're trying to get to is the, you know, the Clovis spear point. Mm -hmm. So these things go from being sort of gross, um, large, thickish bifaces, and they keep working them down until they get to uh, something like you see right here. This one, yeah, yeah. And that's a classic Clovis preform with the overshot flaking that the uh, Salutrian hypothesis people say is classic uh, Salutrian, mm -hmm. and it's a fact. Um, so we see the overshot flaking, overface flaking, and then we see the, uh, the fluting, the early stage in fitting, fluting, mm -hmm. classic Clovis. Um, here's a midsection of one that would have looked just like that. Remember, we're getting the discards. Mm -hmm. and, and when you print that, you've probably seen enough videos to realize there's a high casualty rate when you're sitting there striking the system. Yeah. So we expect that, you know, in a quarry manufacturing site. There are also specialized tools like these scrapers. Mm -hmm. um, so they're probably working some skins and some wood and maybe right. some bone and so forth. So it's not just like they're coming in there for a Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. getting some rocks and leaving. They're probably staying several weeks at a time to get everything processed because I'll show you in a map in a minute. They're, they're taking these from 100, 100 kilometers, 150 kilometers away where there's no flint, mm -hmm. no chirp. Mm -hmm. So they're having to anticipate where they're going to be right. over the next several months. But they do return. Yeah. That's why we have a good dense stratified site. Yeah. They had to come back. So cumulatively, it produced what a giant village would produce. Right. Um, so there, there are other camp activities going on. Here's a, here's a graver spur. Maybe that's good for tattooing, um, sewing skins. Mm -hmm. And then this is what we call a denticulate. Mm -hmm. It's got these uh, toothy projections. Uh, my guess is those are for um, pulling out fibers. Because if you're very mobile, and we think they were generally mobile, um, foraging, going from one place to another, uh, sort of home was on their back, which isn't necessarily a, an insecure, inconvenient way to live if there's plenty of food. Um, and, and you don't have severe winters down here, which we don't think they did. But you need a lot of, a lot of lightweight carrying containers, baskets, maybe wooden bowls. And so I think for the lowest people around here, I wouldn't say that about Montana, which would be a different winter, maybe a different emphasis in their settlement. I'm sure they had baskets too. But down here, uh, portable containers um, are probably the mainstay. So we have, we do have tools here, and I've been fortunate over the, the totality of my career to have a, the same artist do the line drawings. Mm -hmm. He is just excellent. The other thing that we have, you can see in front here, are the classic prismatic blades. Yeah, Clovis is known in most states for producing these long, beautiful blades, mm -hmm. and we do have the blade cores right. that go off, you know, they come off of. So what we have, very few of the blades, and we call these macro blades because they're so large, very few of them are, are fashioned into tools. Now they would have been sharp, freshly struck, but I think what you're looking at are the culls, the rejects here. Okay. 